Late Ming is now over six sexagenary cycles, a period of more than 360 years away. The country has endured the rise and ebb of fortunes, as well as countless catastrophes. Much of the splendor of that material world and the magnificence of its arts have disappeared. The few pieces that survive the ravages of time are now embraced as the rarest of treasures. It is almost impossible to seek works of art from late Ming, such as a seal carved by He Zhen, a teapot made by Si Da Bing, a piece of bamboo engraved by Zhang Xi Huang. In an ephemeral life here today and gone tomorrow, in a lifespan measured by months and years all too brief, Traces of such works are rarely encountered on these quests. Moreover, forgeries abound, enough to be piled as high as a mountain, like searching for a pearl in a river of sand. It is dependent on lucky chance and discernment. Any one missing element makes all effort futile. The impediments and difficulties can be imagined. As I greatly enjoy works on bamboo and have taken pleasure in them for many years, I have collected numerous works by eminent bamboo engravers. In the past, several times in the studio of Jing Mei Hua Si in Shanghai that belonged to my late friend, Mr. Guo Luo Yu, I had examined and admired a bamboo wrist rest engraved by Zhang Xi Huang. The green comb sheath of the bamboo was lightly engraved, the image visually floating on the surface. The carvings are smooth and rounded at the edges. There is no overt mark from the carving knife. It is deceptively like a painting. The engravings of mountain ranges, rhythmic waves, distant village, human figures, rowing boats, draping willows are so fine in detail as to reveal the cleavages of stone and the ripples of water, so vigorous as to catch a glimpse of the boats almost rolling. There are three rustic dwellings. The windows and doors are well organized. There's a beam bridge. The balustrades and piers are orderly. There are six human figures. One is preparing tea. One is gazing afar. Two are inspecting the fishnet. One is rowing. One is fishing. Their postures are each different. When the mind roams this landscape, a light breeze gently strokes and birds sing to the ear. The nostalgic dream of Jiang Nan is carried from so far away by a segment of bamboo. Zhang Xi Huang engraved two lines of running and cursive script on the wrist rest. The words are, Spring scenery in Jiangnan is lovely today. Homeward boats just tied to green willow side, Xi Huang. There's a miniature integral seal, Xi Huang. At the back of the wrist rest, there are another two lines engraved in regular script by someone else. The words are, the intent of this gentleman is the landscape. On the right, it is a wrist rest. On the left, it is a paperweight, Yu Ren.
Yu Ren. Is this person from the Ming Dynasty? Is this person from the Qing Dynasty? Gazing into the opaque past, the identity is too hazy to uncover. We only know that once upon a time, the landscape art of Zhang Xihuang had a true devotee. He wrote and carved these words to express his poetic temperament. He stroked the wrist rest and immersed himself in daydreams. Sometimes he used it as a wrist rest to support his brushwork. Sometimes he used it as a paperweight to rest on his elegant writing paper. Mr. Guo Luo Yu passed away in Renchen year, 2012. Within a few years, the art collection he built in his lifetime was dispersed. In Bingsen, 2016, I was fortunate to acquire this wrist rest by Zhang Xi Huang, the very piece that my late friend dearly cherished and held in custody against all odds for 60 years. Through a tortuous path, it arrived at my modest studio. I pondered that this piece had passed through numerous collections in the last few hundred years, its encounters impossible to unravel. Among the successive collectors, perhaps there had also been friends who passed it on from one to another. The art collection of Mr. Guo Luo Yu was mainly formed before the fall of mainland China to the communists in the 39th year of the Republic, 1949, and during the years shortly after. All refined pursuits were no longer tolerated by the time of the successive communist purges. Later, during the Cultural Revolution, 1966 to 1976, his home was ransacked by the Red Guards. And not only was his whole art collection pillaged, but his wife also suffered permanent brain damage from fear and anxiety. After the Cultural Revolution, those antiques, calligraphy and paintings plundered by the communists that were deemed more recent and of less value were occasionally returned. Those from earlier dynasties that were more valuable were confiscated, with some ending up in public museums. Hence, the Song Dynasty artworks in the collection of Mr. Guo Luo Yu were all confiscated into the Shanghai Museum. Whenever he talked about it, each time brought fresh pain. In early 1950s, Mr. Guo Luo Yu wrote an article titled Pu Zhong Qian and Zhang Xi Huang for a newspaper. A few selected paragraphs state, in the Ming Dynasty, there was another bamboo engraver who specialized in shallow carving named Zhang Xi Huang. He did not remove the kam sheath. He used its light yellow color to carve all sorts of landscapes, clouds, and figures. This technique is called Liu Qing. It is no longer possible to ascertain which province or town he came from. Chu Deyi, 1871 to 1942, cited the names carved on the brush pot by Zhang Xi Huang in the collection of Jing Xiya, 1890 to 1979, as proof that the original name of Zhang Xi Huang was Zhang Zhong Lue. The works of Zhang Xi Huang are documented in a record of memories and dreams. Qian Chen Meng Ying Lu, which says, Reportedly, Zhang Xi Huang engraved a small brush pot in the style of Liu Qing and the words in relief legend. 
a fisherman held a fishing rod, and at the end of the fishing line, there was a small fish, its tail flapping in the water. It was most animated. A small fishing bucket was tied around the waist. These lines were carved. A gentle breeze, a misty drizzle, and countless dragonflies perch on the fishing line. A small seal with the name Shi Huang was carved underneath. In the notes from the Studio of Ancient Scholarship, Zhu Xue and Bi Ji, a bamboo wrist rest by Zhang Shi Huang was also documented. It says, the bamboo is elevated on the surface. The work of landscape and the pavilions are extraordinarily fastidious. It resembles a painting by Li Zhao Dong, 675 to 758 AD. The main peak looms, a towering range that tries to pierce the sky, but interrupted by the clouds. Uphill, the mountain top cannot be seen. On the descent, the foothills cannot be seen. The clouds are sometimes dense and sometimes light. They float and fold. The spectator seems to be on top of the Si Xing peak of Huangshan Mountain, surveying the sea of clouds. In the lower part of the composition, there's a village by the water, the cabins and cottages of the fishermen, the draping willows, and clusters of flowering grass form a continuous vista. The scene alternates between light and dark, as if the setting sun appears and disappears now and then. Sporadically, threads of cooking smoke from the fishermen's dinners rise. The grass and trees by the water are blurred and faded, barely tangible. Then again, it resembles a small composition by Zhao Lingxiang of the Song Dynasty. Wherever there are clouds, sunset, cooking smoke, they are made according to the color of the cum sheath. It is ingenious and natural, and like an engraving. It is a remarkable art object. There is a wrist rest engraved by Zhang Xi Huang in the collection of the studio of articulate brush, Cai Bi Lou. It was lightly carved in the technique of Liu Qing. The subjects are distant mountains, village, beam bridge, grass, trees, and three fishing boats in the foreground. The fishermen on one boat are casting a fishing net. The other two fishing boats are already moored next to the willow trees by the shore. There are six human figures, rowing, preparing tea, and sorting out fishing gear. Their postures are lively and interesting. The inscription reads, Spring scenery in Jiangnan is lovely today. Homeward boats just tied to Green Willow's side. There's a signature of Shi Huang and a small seal of Shi Huang underneath. Mr. Guo Luoyu used quite a number of studio names, which appeared in his authoritative book, The Art of Seal Engraving in China, Biographies of Selected Artists. Other than Cai Bi Lou and Jing Mei Hua Si, they are Ta Ying An, Yi Yan Si, Gui Lai Yan Zai, Chou Zai, Kui Zai, and Ge Yan Si. The eminent bamboo engraver Jing Xia wrote in his book Small Talk on Bamboo Carving. Ke Zhu Xiao Yan.
Regarding the bamboo engravers of the Ming Dynasty, apart from the three Zhu, Zhu He, Zhu Ying, Zhu Zi Zhen, Li Yao, and Pu Chongqian, who established their personal styles and were acknowledged as doyens, there was in addition Zhang Xi Huang. Since Zhang Xi Huang was not a native of Jia Ding, he was excluded from the record of bamboo engravers, Zhu Ren Lu. Nor was he much documented in the literary works of the Qing dynasty. Consequently, his deeds, names, and provincial origin became obscure. I previously collected a brush pot beneath the signature of Xi Wang. There was a seal Zhang Zhong Lue. This meant Zhong Lue was the original name, while Xi Huang was the name he favored for general usage. He has been referred to as a native of Jiang Ying, which remains to be confirmed. All the works of Zhang Xi Huang were executed using the technique of Liu Qing. The technique of Liu Qing was already practiced in the Tang Dynasty, 618 to 906 AD. An example is the bamboo flute called Ba in the collection of the Shosoyin in Japan. However, the works of Zhang Xi Huang depended upon the completeness of the kamshis of bamboo, whether to retain more of it or less, to retain some or none, in order to achieve variations in depth and shallowness, denseness and lightness. Therefore, its splendor is like the five colors of inkwork. If we compare the Ba, which retains all the kam sheets of bamboo for its floral decoration, this represents a tremendous advancement. It is difficult to establish if this technique used by Zhang Xi Huang was invented by him. Regarding the weaving method of ge si, and the needlework of embroidery. The techniques to achieve color change are long established. In polychrome lacquer work, colors are also drawn on different layers and good use is made of color change. Perhaps the development of the engraving technique of Liu Qing was inspired by the techniques from different crafts. Needless to say, Zhang Xi Huang was a distinguished practitioner of this technique. Among the surviving works by Zhang Xi Huang, the pavilion and landscape brush pot, which is illustrated in the chapter of Exemplar, is the finest. The pavilion and landscape brush pot that Jing Xi Ya so deeply appreciated was a piece in his former collection. There's a black and white photograph of it in the chapter of Exemplar, in small talk on bamboo carving. Next to the engraved signature of Xi Huang, there are two engraved seals, seal of Zhang Chong Lue and Xi Huang. Based on this evidence, Jing Xi Ya concluded that the former was the original name and the latter his Zi. On 14th December 1976, the pavilion and landscape brush pot by Zhang Xi Huang was sold at the Sotheby sale in London to the Oriental dealer Bluet and Sons Limited. In March the following year, it was resold to the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston. The Cultural Revolution launched by the Communists lasted 10 years and ended in 1976. Artworks ransacked from homes, if not falling within a designated premium grade, were mostly sold overseas for foreign exchange. The pavilion and landscape brush pot by Zhang Xi Huang was sold at auction in December 1976 whether this coincided 
with the confiscation of art during the Cultural Revolution is difficult for outsiders to know for sure. When German Nazis in the past confiscated the art collections of European Jews or forced them to sell for pittance, their descendants nowadays can seek redress in the courts and press their claims on those artworks in American and European museums. When one day mainland China is finally cleansed, the descendants of those violated collectors who had no recourse to justice may finally be able to resolve their grievances. The surviving works by Zhang Xihuang are as rare as the morning stars. In the National Museum of Asian Art in Washington, there's a bamboo brush pot by Zhang Xihuang engraved with the poem Returning to Live in the Country by Tao Qian, 365 to 427 AD. Next to the engraved signature of Zhang Xihuang are two small engraved seals, seal of Zhang Zhongrue and Xihuang. The seals are the same as those on the brush pot at the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston. In the Ashmolean Museum at Oxford in Britain, there's a bamboo brush pot by Zhang Xihuang engraved with the essay Second Ode to the Red Cliffs by Su Si, 1037 to 1101. There's an engraved inscription, Fresh Autumn in Dingwei here, Zhang Xihuang from Nechen. Underneath are two small engraved seals, seal of Zhang Xihuang and Xihuang. Dingwei year can refer to the 35th year of the Wanli reign, 1607, in the Ming Dynasty, or the 6th year of the Kangxi reign, 1667, in the Qing Dynasty. Since Zhang Xihuang was a bamboo carver from late Ming, this piece should be dated the 35th year of the Wanli reign, 1607. Nechen is a county in Hubei province. This would be the hometown of Zhang Xihuang. In the Shanghai Museum, there's a bamboo wristrest by Zhang Xihuang engraved with the poem in the company of numerous gentlemen with courtesans at Zhang Ba Canal one evening to cool off before encountering the rain by Du Fu, 712 to 770 AD. There's an engraved inscription. On 16th June in Yiwei year, I fortuitously engraved this at Zhu Sang Su Wu, Zhang Xihuang from Guan San. Underneath, there's a small engraved seal with the name Xihuang. Using the date of the brush pot at the Ashmolean Museum as reference, Yi Wei year should be the 23rd year of the Wanli reign, 1595. The two pieces were engraved by Zhang Xihuang 12 years apart. There's a hill named Guan San next to the South River of Gu Zhen County of Hubei Province. Hence, his native province was Hubei. In the Peking Palace Museum, there's an agarwood wine goblet by Zhang Xihuang engraved with the theme of Ode to the Red Cliffs by Su Si. There's an engraved inscription, Su Dongpo Si visiting the Red Cliffs by boat. Next to these words is a small oval seal with the characters Xi Huang Zi. 
This is the only work by Zhang Shi Huang using the official script calligraphy and the seal of Shi Huang Zi. This wine goblet is proof that Zhang Shi Huang also did carvings in wood. One may postulate that he also carved other utensils for daily usages. But with the passing of time, very few pieces have survived. Little is known of the life of Zhang Shi Huang. Books from the past rarely documented him. Surveying his existing pieces, a short profile is drafted in an attempt as supplement. Zhang Zhongrue, Zi Xi Huang, Hao Xi Huang Zi. He lived at Zhu Sang Su Wu, native of Hecheng, Hubei province. He was skillful in calligraphy, adapted seal engraving, and proficient in landscape painting. Yet these works are all lost. He particularly excelled in the Liu Qing technique of bamboo engraving. His surviving works in engraving include wrist rests, brush pots, and a wine goblet. He carved mostly landscape. He was an eminent bamboo engraver during the Wanli period of the Ming Dynasty. His style was unique totally different from other well-known bamboo engravers from Jia Ding in his time. For such an illustrious bamboo engraver of his generation, during his life, there was scant record. In death, there was no biography. It had to do with the carelessness and idleness of his contemporaries and negligence of later generations. It is regrettable that since ancient times, countless talents who possessed unrivaled virtuosities had gone unrecorded and their names sunk into oblivion. The sense of loss and disappointment are particularly strong when upon gathering the few remaining works by Zhang Shi Huang, 400 years later, only a few lines can trace and imagine his life.